Hello there, I'm Sumitra Salvaraj and this is Kanjivaram 101. Now in part one of the series we sorted out naming terminology. Kanjivaram Sare, Kanjivaram, Kanji Silk, or Kanjivaram Patu all mean exactly the same thing. But what makes a Kanjivaram a Kanjivaram? These are the main factors for your reference should you be in the market for an authentic Kanjivaram Sari. Now, number one, the sari has to be produced in Kanjipuram within the boundaries mentioned by the geographical indication territory. Number two, the silk has to be three ply, meaning that three threads of silk twist together to form one. Number three, the zari composition is at least 40% silver, 35.5% copper, and 0.5% gold. And finally, the three shuffle corby method is employed to weave the contrasting borders on a Kanjipuram. Now, unless you're a walking chemistry lab with magnifying glasses for eyes and also have the superpower to look at a sari and immediately see its history in flashback, there is no way for you to ascertain if a kanjivaram is the real deal. Even within kanjivaram, not every weaver produces a genuine kanjivaram. Why? Because while they have the geographical territory part right, there is still the issue of silk, zari, and corbe. These three factors are tied to cost and very high cost of that. It is simply not possible for many weavers to scrape together the required raw materials and funds and extra labor involved in manufacture a kanjivaram. But they can make something that looks like a kanjivaram sari for sure. Neighboring towns around kanjivaram also produce saris that look like kanjivarams and the buyer is none the wiser, especially if the sari comes via a vendor or a third party who says that they picked it up from the Kanjipuram area, rather vague. So what can you do then if you are in the market for a genuine Kanjipuram silk sari? Well, you should always purchase your Kanjipuram from a trusted vendor from as close to the source as possible. If you're not in Kanjipuram yourself and buying direct from an accredited weaver or a cooperative, then you have to be buying from a vendor who is there or who travels there or who has a direct contact there. It's nothing more than trust, because as I mentioned earlier, it can be tough for you to gauge the silk and zari composition just by looking at a sari. Yes, as you become more experienced and well-versed with saris, you'll develop a feel for it. You'll likely be able to tell the difference between silk and artificial silk, say, and you'll start getting the hang of how different qualities of zari look and feel under your fingers. But what if you're a newbie or just don't wear saris all that often to be familiar with them? I feel that even if you're new to saris or not a habitual wearer, you do not deserve to get cheated by vendors who try and pass off fakes as kanjivarams and in the process rob you of your money. Now, I know these are strong words, but if a vendor is selling you a sari that they say is a kanjivaram and yet it isn't, this is not fair. In fact, it's criminal. And I know that if you don't mind whether a kanjivaram is authentic or not, and you just want a nice sari, that's perfectly fine as well. But if you're selling or purchasing a sari that you know is not a kanjivaram, and yet you insist on calling it a kanjivaram, then my friend, the poor kanjivaram sari is not the problem here. In the next video, I'll share with you what a genuine kanjivaram should look like. If you'd like updates on this series, please do follow at Saris and Stories on Instagram.